very competitive market and how companies can innovate. This was the subject of Donald Fallowell's speech during the Crossland Sullivan Hill event held in Sao Paulo. Hello, nice to have you here. Uh, what's the journal for the visionary innovation? Nice to meet you, Rebecca. The journey of visionary innovation is something that we work with each of our clients to challenge themselves to take their own teams, their own companies, their careers, and do something absolutely significant. It's, you know, much of what we pattern this around, though, it is, is thinking about the great innovators across history. Henry Ford, he didn't envision a world that his customers were asking for. Had he envisioned a world like that, the customers would have said, we want a faster horse. What he envisioned was a world of personal mobility. And he designed a car. He designed factories to mass produce the cars, a road system developed. And he envisioned a world that the customers really wanted but couldn't envision. Steve Jobs, likely, or, or likewise, did the same thing, where he, you know, by thinking so much about customers, climbing into the customer's mindset, understanding what they would love, and then building that as you want to come. That, that's the kind of idea of a journey to visionary innovation. And we believe that is especially crucial for large utilities, for, for the big telcos, the big, the big power utilities and companies, and, 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 and other you know, large conglomerates looking at what can they do to change the world. And a lot of this comes down to just what I think was Steve Jobs' actual genius, which is a ruthless focus on the customer. And in one of the quotes about Jobs that I don't think gets talked about very much is that he said he's more proud of the things he did not do than the things that he did. And part of that is having a, such a ruthless focus that he put away things that were not going to help him get anywhere. He climbed into the heart and soul of his customer, and then he designed uh, products and services for the customer. You go to the Apple store, and it's unlike any retail of the experience. Why is that? Because Steve thought about the customer more than anyone else, and ruthlessly focused on delivering extremely valuable uh, experience to the customer, all the way down to the last receipt, the last document they got before they leave. You, you said about... Uh looking at the customers and uh, driving this innovation forward to the customers. Do you think telecom operators might follow this step? How can carriers differentiate themselves in, in this very competitive telecom market? Well, I think this is one of the great areas for innovation, is to take comms and think about what kind of platforms, what kind of approaches to comms do the, the customers want next? What, uh, what is the next the, the next level, the next level of ease of use, the next level of mobility, the, whatever it may be, the, the telecom operators and, and, and the strategists on those teams can spend very fruitful time thinking about, have we really maximized the comms world? Of course not. There's so much more that can be done. So how can the telcos say, we're going, we're going to scrap the step change innovation, the small little tweaks to products or services, we're going to do something bold to find what the customer really would love is in getting today and develop the technology to deliver that to the customer. In this uh, journey to the visionary innovation, uh, in which step do you think companies in general uh, are? And what, what is missing? And in what, uh, in what they can work on to become more innovative, more innovative, to bring more innovation? That's a great question. I think it differs in a lot of different countries, but you know, in, a, in a very buoyant emerging market like Brazil, you have a great sense of optimism. That can be a wonderful spur of innovation. In other parts of the world, fear is more dominant, and so people are holding back. And rather than innovating, they're thinking about small little changes. And I believe most companies dedicate a tremendous amount of innovation effort around just product innovation. I showed some slides this morning that actually show that the lowest return on our innovation effort is in the product tweaking, the little step changes. That's not old. But the greatest value return is on the business strategy side, new business models, new, you know, developing new partner ecosystems.
ecosystems, those uh, innovation efforts that tend to get a little bit less volume of, of you know, mind share, volume of time, those actually generate the highest return on the innovation effort. So we need to think about innovation differently. Let's move from the product and let's look more at the business model, the strategic side, the partner ecosystem side, and all of that. That needs to change. To take more time thinking about us than to developing it already. Absolutely. And then also to evaluate, are our innovation efforts actually getting us where we want to go? I mean, a lot of innovation efforts don't really achieve too much. And a lot of times we, we are focusing on the wrong things. I spend a lot of time with the pharmaceutical industry to give another example. And the pharmaceutical industry, some of the biggest pharma companies in Europe, deliver a negative ROI on their massive R&D spend. So maybe they're not doing something very well. On the other hand, the automotive industry is incredibly innovative. So when I'm talking to pharma executives, I say, guys, you need to look beyond pharma, look to automotive. Don't go operate you know, some of the big service providers on, 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 in terms of comps. Maybe, maybe look outside their industry. Look at the FMCG space. Look at automotive. Look at some of the innovative platforms in other industries and see how you use those. Uh, Thank you all for this interview. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. I'm Roberta Prescott. Follow us at rshawireless.com.